Hey, Pastor Harold here from Abundant Life Church in Forsyth, Georgia. I just want to take a moment to say thank you for tuning in today and watching our service. My prayer today is that it would richly bless you in the name of the Lord. Now look, if you're looking for a place to worship in person that is full of the power and the presence of God, you want to be right here in Forsyth, Georgia. Our address is 962 Juliet Road. We meet every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock with my groups, which is a time of discipleship, fellowship, uh, time to get to know one another. And then at 10.30, we go into our regular service. Now, we have uh, child care for these times, children's ministry. We have nursery. All this is on Sundays. Tuesday nights at 6 p.m., we have a prayer service that everybody is welcome to join. Whether you attend another church or not, come be a part of a corporate prayer meeting and let the power of God touch you. Then on Wednesday nights, we meet once again at 7 p.m., and that's the time of a Bible study slash preaching time, preaching time. And also youth meets at 7 p.m. as well, along with children's ministry again, nursery, and so forth. So look, I want to invite you to come out at any of these times and be a part of what God's doing right here in Forsyth, Georgia. Lastly, I just want to touch on one thing. People ask all the time, how can I sow into the ministry? Beloved, all you have to do is mail your check-in to 962 Juliet Road, uh, for Scythe, Georgia, 310209. We also have an app. You can go to iTunes or Google Play. Yeah, I think it's called Abundant Life Church, Georgia. You can get on there, tap on the Forsyth page, and that will be, uh, send all donations to us. Or you can always call here, look us up, and somebody can get you in the right direction. But look, the biggest thing is I want you to watch this entire me message all the way to the end. Because at the end of it, I have another message just for you. God bless you. I hope to see you in a minute.
Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father is who you are to me. Praise the living God this morning. Well, thank you for coming out today and worshiping with us. Amen. If this is your first time here this morning, raise your hand. I got something for you. Anybody first time right there? Right there, Josh, grab one of them and give it to that man right there. We appreciate you coming out this morning and worshiping with us. We don't take it for granted that you chose here. We believe God has brought you here for a reason today. Amen. Amen. Well, today we're going to get into, uh, I don't know, the Lord may be turning this thing into a series. I don't know, but I felt like he's continuing on with the word he gave me last week, divine expansion. And today God put on my spirit about the Lord's favor in our life. How many of you know you got the favor of the Lord on your life? Amen. Amen. The favor of the Lord is on your life. And today we're going to be in Isaiah chapter 61. And so if you can, uh, if you're physically able this morning, I'd like for you to find that passage of scripture and stand to your feet for the reading of God's word, not for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 61 and verse 1. It says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. To bring good news to the afflicted, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to the prisoners, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn to grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of spirit of fainting. So they will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. Then they will rebuild the ancient ruins. They will raise up the former devastations, and they will repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Strangers will stand and pasture your flocks, and foreigners will be your farmers and your vine dressers. But you will be called the priests of the Lord. You will be spoken of as ministers of our God. You will eat the wealth of nations, and in their riches you will boast. Instead of your shame, you will have a double portion. Instead of humiliation, they will shout for joy over their portion. Therefore, they will possess a double portion in their land. Everlasting joy will be theirs. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise right there. Hallelujah. Let us pray, precious Lamb of God. We thank you today for what you've done. I thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do. So, Lord, I submit myself to you, a humble but yet willing vessel, God. You have appointed this day, and you have anointed me for this time. So, Lord, I ask you, continue to anoint my lips to preach and teach your word. Anoint the ears to hear it and the hearts to receive it. I pray today that the seed would go forth. And, Father, it would hit the file of ground. It would hit the fertile soil. I pray today, God, that your word would go forth and it would not return void. I pray today, Father, that there would be an increase in this house. I pray today there would be an increase in our anointings. I pray today there would be an increase in our levels of expectation. I, I pray today, Father, that you would have liberty in this house that no one else could diminish, God. I pray today, Lord, that you would have your way in the people's lives today and we would submit and be yielded to you now father I ask you today let no one leave this place the same way they walked in I bind up the spirit right now of confusion I bind up the hindering spirit in the name of Jesus I bind up the thoughts in the people's minds that would not let them hear what the, the word of the Lord would say. And I loose the Spirit of God in this house this morning to speak to the people's hearts. Now, Father, I thank you for this is the day that you have made. And I will rejoice 
and be glad in it because though sorrow may last for the night a joy comes in the morning and father this is the morning time and i will rejoice in it in the name of jesus now somebody lift up a praise for fa the father today and give him a hand clap of praise in this house hallelujah hallelujah you may be seated this morning turn around tell somebody you're glad to see them hallelujah hallelujah mm. hallelujah well I don't know what you expected when you walked into this place today but I expected to have an encounter with God today. Amen. Look, like I said, we on day seven of a fast. Our, our flesh has been, been submissive to, to the spirit. I hope yours has anyway. I, I know you have to fight through that thing. Look, I have to fight through it too, man. I'm telling you, I have to fight through it. But when we do it, you see how God moves in this thing. You, you, you see the, uh, the particip uh, not the participation, but the anticipation that comes with it. Uh, we wake up and we say, man, I just, I got to get into God's presence. Amen. I, I just got to get into his presence. And today you've entered a house that I believe is, uh, that God is putting on fire. As my wife was saying this morning, was coming down the road, she said, sometimes, baby, it's like a lighter. You just got to keep striking it for a minute. But eventually that thing, account, uh, it, it'll catch flame. Uh, there's only so many strikes that you got to do before that thing will rise up and be a burning fire. I don't know about you, but the fire of God is burning inside of me. And I came this morning to deposit it in some of you. Mm. hallelujah seeking the face of the Lord it just does things it expands us so if you can expand your way of thinking this morning and hear what the Holy Ghost is trying to do today and, and hear what he's trying to say I'm telling you you're going to be on track for divine expansion when I was worshiping God showed me about six people at the end of service it's going to get a touch from them so you got to go ahead and say, I'm one of those six. I'm one of those six. Amen. Because, look, I don't limit him. Amen. He might have showed me six, but it could have been 66. Amen. Come on, somebody. So I mentioned last week that I'm just, man, I'm excited. I'm telling you, I might be running in a minute. You just don't know where I'm at. Hey. Well, I mentioned last week that, that the Lord had given me a word for 2022, and that word was divine expansion, or that, those words were divine expansion. So I want you to shout on the count of three, divine expansion. One, two, three. All right, now shout it like you want Jesus to hear you. One, two, three. All right, now, now say it like where the community can hear you. One, two, three. All right, give God praise for that right there. Hallelujah. Now, last week I talked about to be able to receive the divine expansion that God has for us. We have to look uh, at our past minimal troubles that we have and put our focus on the creator of heaven and earth. Look at what he's already done, beloved, and not look at the things that, that we had mis, uh, misfortunes in and all, all our troubles and circumstances, but look at what God has done and look at what he's doing. Take him out of the box and let God be God. I reminded you that God is wanting you to be a movement and not a monument. Amen. God is going to bring his people to a place of power and prosperity in the year 2022. I believe that. Amen. Thank you for those four. But in order to expand, we got to let go of some things. I told you you can't put new wine in the old wine skin. The old wine skin can't expand. I told you that God gives a promise, uh, and when his promise is given, it's going to happen. It's going to come to fruition. Uh, you know, the uh, his promises ain't like man. No, no. 
His promises ain't just something people speak and they don't never have any meaning behind it. His word has meaning behind it. His word has power behind it. His word has life behind it. You have to grab a hold to what God is saying. You have to, you have to look at what he's saying in his word and grab a hold of it. Third, I told you, you got to expand your way of, of thinking who God is because for every one way you can think of expanding yourself, God has already got a thousand ways to expand you. See, we only think it can be done this way or that way, but when we surrender to him fully, he can stretch us to things that we never thought we could be stretched into. Look, when you first start stretching, if you've ever tried doing it, I ain't going to try to do it this morning. I got enough rips in my pants this morning. They won't need no more. But if you ever start stretching, you got to just start doing it. Amen. You just ain't going to jump up and jump, jump in the air and do a split. No, it takes time. You got you to gotta learn to just start doing a little bit every day. A little bit every day. Expand every day. Expand your way of thinking every day. Expand your prayer life every day. Expand your uh, devotion time every day. Expand your witnessing every day. I don't care if you witness to your dog and your cat, your fish, the birds outside. Speak it into the atmosphere. But if you'll expand your way of doing things, it'll become natural to you. And you let God shit it out. God will expand you. God is desiring to expand you. So let him have liberty in your life. When we let God have liberty in our life, it shows that we trust the Father. When you say, no, God, I'm going to do it my way. Oh, I hear you, Lord, but now ain't the day, now ain't the time. Then you're saying you don't trust him. Mm -mm. I know nobody likes to hear stuff like that. Let me go on over here. Turn the fan on because y'all got me sweating. You just can't see it. To have a late relationship with the Father, you have to trust Him. No relationship ever works without trust. If you've ever had a, a boyfriend, girlfriend, fiance, or if you're married, if you do not have trust, it will not work. It will not work. The same way is with the Father. If you can't trust him, it will never work. You need to have a relationship with him that says, here I am, Lord. Have your way in me and through me. I give you liberty. Do you know how you can tell when somebody is fully submitted to the Lord? Because there's liberty in their life. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, now the spirit of the Lord. Uh, uh, now the Lord is the spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Freedom. When you operate in the freedom of God's grace and God's mercy, it shows that the spirit of the Lord dw is dwelling inside of you. Mm. Beloved. If you are baptized and full of the Holy Ghost, then the Lord should be moving you around like a marionette puppet. Did I say that right, darling? I had to ask her what that meant. I couldn't remember. I was just thinking about the puppet on the string. She says, it's a marionette puppet. That's what you should be. Instead, most of us have God as the marionette puppet. Mm. He should be able to use you how he wants to instead of us using him like we want to. Ah, you got to understand, beloved, who he is in your life and who he desires and wants to be in your life. So today we're going to speak some things into this atmosphere again. We take an authority over this community. I'm telling you right now, I speak into this atmosphere today, and I'm going to declare some things to Forsyth, Georgia. I'm going to declare it to Monroe County. I'm going to declare it to this region. I'm going to declare it to the enemy today. No more will you keep us bound up and shut up. We've been called, anointed, chosen. We are a royal priesthood. We are a chosen generation. Hey, hey, hey. I'm telling you, devil, we have crossed over into a new dimension, and it's one of divine expansion somebody shout divine expansion there is nothing that you can do to stop us you may hinder us along the way you may throw some obstacles in our path there may be some battles to fight but I decree and declare into this atmosphere today that this is the year for God to accomplish what he's already established in us and he's already put inside of this church what he's already done in this community this is the year abundant life for sight. I declare and decree to you this day that we are shifting. We're shifting into our rightful ownership of what God has given us already. Oh, we are the head and not the tail. We are above 
and not beneath. Hey, I'm telling you today, my father owns the cattle on a thousand. You got to understand what God is fixing to do in this place. I don't know about you today, but I'm ready to follow God into that next dimension. If you're ready to follow him in there, say, I'm ready. I receive it. Father, fill me up so I can pour out in Jesus' name. Now give about 15 seconds and give him praise. Oh, come on, give him a ta-da praise. We've been talking about it. Give them that kind of praise and you can't see it. I can't touch it. I can't feel it. But I know it's about to take place because my God, my God does not let his word not return. It's always going to return like he's anticipated it to. I know it's on the way. I know it's on the way. Hallelujah. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm telling you today, you got to understand what God is wanting to do. God has just given me revelation of some things, and I'm just excited about what he's wanting to do, beloved. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The sad thing about this is that God showed me that ain't everybody going to go with us. I hate it. Some of us just ain't going to go there. So some of you might, this might be the last time you hear this morning. You might not like what I got to say today. We ain't always going to be right here. We ain't always going to be right here. Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him. Come on. Hey, praise him like your children just got saved. Praise him like your children just got saved. Praise him like your lost loved ones just got saved. Praise him like your neighbors are getting saved today. Hey, praise him. Praise him today like your finances just got expanded. Praise him like your business just growed a little bit. Praise him this morning. Come on, somebody. Hey. Come on, Jesus. You got to praise God. You got to praise him today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Shit it out. My God. Let me stay on track. Hey. Thank you for that encouragement. I don't know about you, but during this fast, I've been experiencing some expansion. Uh Uh-huh. In my mind. Amen. See, I've been limiting God myself. But now, now where I once was blind, now I can see. Uh Uh-huh. Where the enemy put that veil over my eyes, my God has come and ripped it down, and now I can see. Amen? Mm. If you're fasting and you're agreeing with this ministry and you're agreeing with this house, I can tell you right now, God is expanding you. You may not realize it yet, but just hold on. Just hold on. Amen? So in this year of expansion, I believe God is giving us some promises. And there's four of them I want to look at this morning. First, the kingdom will grow. The kingdom will grow this year. Second, he is going to bind up the broken hearts. Third, change is going to happen. And fourth, it's going to be the year of the double blessing. But all this can happen only by the creative power of the Holy Spirit. And you got to let him be willing to create inside of you. Mm. See, I have been decreeing and declaring some things in my life, and I decree and declare the Lord's favor mm, over this ministry. Oh, yeah. I decree and declare it. I can speak a thing and let it be. Amen. Not that I'm God. No, 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 no. But Jesus said all authority he had given me. He said he'd go to the Father for me. So if I could speak those things in faith. See, your faith has to go somewhere. Mm. I, I know he says you only got to have a faith of the mustard seed, but eventually that mustard seed's got to grow into a mustard plant. <laughs> it's got to grow somewhere. It's got to go somewhere. Amen? Mm-mm-mm. Let's just lift our hands for just a minute and declare some things. I want you to say this right here. 2022 will be the year of divine expansion and favor 
over this ministry, over my house, over my finances, over my businesses, over my life, over my job. In Jesus' name, give God a hand clap for that right there. Isaiah 61 and 7 said, instead of your shame, you will have a double portion. Instead of humiliation, they will shout for joy over their portion. Therefore, they will possess a double portion in their land. Everlasting joy will be theirs. By God's mercy and his grace, we have made it through another year. We put 2021 in the books. And I know 2021 wasn't as good as we'd wanted it to be. If we look back at what took place over the world and in our lives, none of that was promising either. We can look at the government, we can look at the church, and we can say they both failed. The world basically went through a, uh, through a form of recession, a form of depression, and oppression. Many people lost their jobs, or either they gave them up and lived off our tax, I mean our government's money. For many of us, that meant that our salaries were cut, our hours were cut, our work schedule was changed. Maybe it was increased because lack of help. The price of items have gone up and doubled. But yet there seems to be no increase in our income. COVID hit the world and the flu left the world. I take lightly of none of these events understand me. I know that there are people that lost loved ones due to the COVID virus. But beloved, I believe, as me and my father-in-law was, was texting yesterday, it still shocks me that he texts at 80, but me and him was texting yesterday, and he got my mind stirring on some things, and we was talking about some, certain scriptures, and last year and the year before, I believe was a proving time for the church. For the faith of the church to be faithful to God as he is always faithful to us. You got to understand, God brought you to where you are today. You didn't bring you to where you are today. He brought us through to this moment. This day and this time, we may have had some difficulties, we may have had some obstacles, but the same God that was in the lion's den with Daniel and the same God that walked through the fire with the Hebrew boys, Mad Mashak, Iraq, and Mendigo, if the same God that was there is the same God with us, the same God that walked on the water and the same God that saved Peter when he went to fall, he's the same God that picks you up every time you stumble and every time you fall, every time you look at the circumstances of the world and you give in to what the world's saying he's the same God that says here I am take my hand where was your faith at as I've been praying and seeking the Lord and reflecting over things and the, the situations and the circumstances God is continuing to lead me to a place of expansion and the Holy Spirit has led me to Isaiah. In verse 7 of Isaiah, it says in the New King James Version, instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, huh, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. It is always good, listen to me, when you search and study the scriptures to look before the scriptures and look after the scriptures. So today, God had given me that it's a, a year of the Lord's favor. And in verse 2 of Isaiah 61, it says, To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. Mm. Your season is over. It's over with. We are no longer dwelling in the past any longer. Here, let me let me just go and preach for a minute. But I gotta I gotta set some things up. 
So in uh, this passage of scripture, Isaiah comes from the Hebrew name Yeshayahu. Yeshayahu, meaning Yahweh for short, which is salvation or God who saves. Now Isaiah was writing this at a time to bring comfort and to bring hope for God's chosen people in, uh, during a time of the Babylonian captivity. And Isaiah comes with a message of restoration. God is promising a new beginning for Jerusalem and its people. And I feel today that God is speaking to us the same thing. Right in the midst of our troubles and our situations, in the middle of our circumstances and our difficulties, I believe God's favor is going to be with us if we can trust him to lead and guide us. I believe God is going to give us a new beginning where things have been dead. They will be life again. I see the breath of God breathing on some dead things all around me where hope and comfort couldn't be found. He said, I know the thoughts that I have towards you to give you a future and a hope. I'm telling you, where things have ended, new beginnings are happening. But what is a new beginning? A new beginning first requires a new creation. New beginnings is something new. The old system changes and a new system starts. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, this person is a new creation. The old things passed away. Behold, things have come, the new things. So the first step to having new beginnings is making sure that you are a new creation. Uh, a lot of people go to church, but they're not saved. A lot of people go to church, but they're not a new creation. A lot of people go to church, they look the look, walk the walk, talk the talk, but they still living in the old ways. And the Bible just said, therefore, he is a new creation. If they're still living in the past and the past is still there, you have to question, are they a new creation? Mm -mm -mm. A new creation marks the start of a new beginning in our spiritual life. But do not underestimate and do not forget it also marks the end of an old man. New beginning starts with a new creation. When God does something new in your life, he starts to create something new. Creation is the work of the Holy Spirit. Psalm 104, verses 20 through 30, the psalmist is, is talking about God's creation. And look at what he says right here in 24 through 30. Lord, how many are your works? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions. There is the sea, great and broad, in which are swarms without number. Animals both small and great, the ships move along there. And Leviathan, which you have formed to have fun in it, they all wait for you to give them their food in due season. You give to them, they gather it up. You open your hand, they are satisfied with good. You hide your face and they are terrified. You take away their breath and they perish and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit. They are created. And you renew the face of the ground. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of creation. All the way back in Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3, it says, And the earth was a formless and desolate emptiness. And darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hover, hovering over the surface of the waters. And then God said, let there be light, and there was light. It was by the Word of God and the Holy Spirit which did the creation in the beginning. Look, the Word of God says about, uh, look at how what he talks about us as far as our created being. In Job 30 and 4, it says, the Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. John 6, 63 says, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh provides no benefit. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. The same Holy Spirit will give you a new beginning and a new creation in 2022. Why? Because Isaiah 61, 1 says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. 
because the Lord anointed me to bring good news to the humble. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim, proclaim release to captives and freedom to prisoners. Beloved, I'm telling you right now, he said he's going to set some people free. Uh, you ain't, let me just read that again. Ah, uh, to proclaim, release the captives and freedom to the prisoners. Somebody right there needs, you've been a prisoner for too long to the ways of the world and to the mindset of the enemy. You've let the, let the enemy speak into your mind for so long. It's held you back. It's kept you bound up. It's kept you in a place that you can't even move forward with God anymore. And I'm telling you today, the spirit of the Lord is upon you if you will let him rest on you. I'm telling you, if you'll yield to the spirit of God, yield to the Holy Spirit. He'll make you a new creation today. All we have to do is yield to what God wants to do. If we yield to Him, if the church will yield to Him, He will accomplish what He set out to do. But it takes a yielding. So He's right on track with that word. So the first thing I said was going to happen in 2022 is the kingdom of God will grow. Isaiah again, 61, 1 and A, what they call it, the first part of the scripture. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. God is speaking that the church will grow. The church will grow. The church will grow. The church will grow worldwide. All right. See, we can't limit him. Oh, yeah, we're going to grow. We're gonna be. No, the church will grow worldwide. Let me just lend you on some, in, let you in on some things. Pastor Jeremiah, I think the ladies have started his book this morning, The Overflow. Now, this book is already going nationwide. It's on up the East Coast. It's been sent out west. There are pastors that are calling asking for this book. We have a church in Ireland that is about to be launched or already has been launched. Hmm. Well, thank you, God, for what you're doing. I give you praise for it. You got to hear what I'm saying today, beloved. I'm not boasting on him. I'm not boasting on this ministry. I'm boasting on what God's going to do. He's going to grow the kingdom of God this year. You got to understand, this church right here in Forsyth, Georgia, is being watched in multiple states. It's being watched in Africa. It's being watched in India. Do you know this morning I was communicating with pastors in India and Africa this morning. I was talking to them today about live stream, about setting up a service to speak to them over the airways I'm meeting Tuesday with a pastor right now that is going to bring a Latino we're going to bring a Latino service right here on Sunday nights we're expanding this is the year of divine expansion you got to understand where I'm coming from today and as the Lord leads we'll be traveling back to these areas abundant life ministries We'll see revival, beloved. Abundant life, we'll see this divine expansion that I'm talking about. And we will see and experience revival on a whole new level. God will use, listen to me right here, everyone, somebody say everyone, that is willing uh -huh, to preach the good news. That's everybody in this room. Everybody in this room. Isaiah 61, uh, 1C says to proclaim release to the captives and freedom to the prisoners. I'm telling you, I'm speaking things into the atmosphere. I, ho I hope you're grabbing these things. But many who have been and, and still are captive by the devil will be free this year. The Holy Spirit is going to set the captives free this year. I believe we're going to see a deliverance of people with demonic oppressions and possessions like we've never seen before. I believe that there's going to be curses broken off some of your lives that go all the way back to the third and to the fourth generations. I believe the bondages of hell that have held people back will be done away with in this year, 2022. The Holy Spirit will cast out every evil spirit thought. Oh, yielding vessels always need is to be yielded. I declare this year will be a year. That the Spirit of God has liberty and the favor of God will be on our lives. The second thing I said, he will bind up the broken hearts. Isaiah 61, 1b says he has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. When the Holy Spirit comes, he not only comes to set you free and deliver you, but he comes to heal. 
He comes to heal the brokenhearted. If you went through one of, one of the worst years ever last year, or if you went through one of the worst times of your life last year with a confused mind and a broken heart, let me tell you something. You're here today for one reason. God sent you here to heal your heart this morning. I don't know. You may not be in this room. You may be watching online. But I'm telling you today, God is here to heal the brokenhearted. If your heart's hurting, God said he's going to heal it today. If you feel like you're hurting because you ain't achieved anything in the past, God's going to heal you today. I'm telling you, beloved, if you feel like you're hurting because you ain't got no peace in your family, God's going to heal your heart. If you're hurting because you think you have no future, God's going to heal you. If you feel like you have no way to get out of financial debt, God's going to heal you. If you feel like you got hurt because of the death of loved ones, God's going to heal you. If you're oppressed and depressed and lonely and you feel your life is a failure, I'm telling you right now, then let God have it today. Let go and let God, beloved. Let God have the hurt. Stop worrying about it. Give it to him. Pastor, I've given it to him in the past, but I still have hurt. He said he'd bind up the brokenhearted, grab a hold of his word. Say, God, I hold you to your word right here. And your word says you'll bind up the brokenhearted. So if you're hurting in your heart, you've got to let God have it. And if you're still hurting, you ain't let God have it. That's the way it works, beloved. He says he'll bind it up, but to bind it up, you've got to give it to him. If you want that hurt to go, whatever it may be. You got to let it go. Lift your hands to me. If you're hurting in this house today, just lift your hands. Because I decree and declare over your life today that God's going to provide for you in 2022. I decree and declare over your life today that he is going to bind up the broken heart that's inside of you. I decree and declare today that he's going to bring joy in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare today he will restore what is lost according to his word. Hallelujah. Joel 2 and 25 in the King James Version says, And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm. Let me tell you something, beloved. His word does not return void. In this upcoming year, you will be restored. You will be restored. You will be restored. You will find peace. You will find peace. You will find joy. That's right. Go ahead and give them that to die praise again because you got to let them know, God, I, I receive it. I may not feel it, but I receive it today, God. I know I can't feel it, God. I know I can't see it, God, but I receive it today. It's a Tada praise that gets the hand of God moving. Why? Because it's a praise by faith. The third thing I said, he's going to bring change. Isaiah 61, 3 says, To grant those who mourn in Zion, giving them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the cloak of praise instead of a disheartened spirit. So they will be called oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. Man, when the Holy Spirit comes upon a person, change has to happen, beloved. He will make all things new. It will never be the same again. So watch this change that is promised by God. Now watch this. Let me, let me go for teaching mode for a minute. Beauty for ashes. What does it mean when you read that statement, beauty for ashes? In biblical time, you've got to understand people in a time of difficulty, in a time of mourning, they would lay in ashes. They would lay in them and they would just throw them all over their self. Therefore, you could say they'd be a little dirty, a little nasty. There's nothing beautiful about ashes. There's nothing beautiful about having ashes in your fireplace, on your car, or when there's a fire outside, and there's nothing beautiful about ashes on your body. Amen. But this is what the caring father says. 61.3 of the passage translation says, To strengthen those crushed by despair who mourn in Zion, to give them a beautiful bouquet in the place of ashes, the oil of bliss instead of tears, and the mantle of joyous praise instead of the spirit of heaviness. Because of this, they will be known as mighty oaks of righteousness planted by Yahweh as a living display of his glory. Hallelujah. Give God praise right there. God is going to take your difficult, disgusting, depressed, 
horrible uh, circumstance and situation. Everything in your life that is ugly and hurt and full of ashes. Mm. He is going to give you beauty. He is going to give you beauty. Listen to me this morning. The Holy Spirit is going to take the ash out of you and offer of you and make something beautiful in you and out of you. I'm telling you right. Look at your neighbor and tell him, say, you're fixing to see a supermodel. Uh, now look at your other one and say, I'm already there. Yeah. Amen. You're fixing to be beautiful in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh huh. He also says, Joy for mourning. The oil of joy for mourning. Once again, you got to understand in the biblical times, when a person was in a season of mourning, they would stop putting on oils and cream on their face. All right? So their faces would look somewhat disfigured because they're used to seeing all this makeup and stuff on them. They would look a little bit rough. Amen. But when a person was happy, they would put on the oil and the creams all over their face, and therefore their faces would glow and shine with a gladness. And God is saying to us this year, he's going to give you that joy, the joy, the oil of the Holy Spirit. Ah, uh, it might not be the oil of cream, and it might not be the oil of makeup, but it's going to be the oil of the Holy Ghost. And when the oil of the Holy Ghost hits you, I'm telling you, it's going to be a joy in your life like you've never experienced. Mm. The oil of joy is the Holy Spirit, beloved, in Hebrews 1, 9 in the passage. It says, for you have cherished righteousness and detested lawlessness. For this reason, God, your God, has anointed you and poured out the oil of bliss on you more than any of your friends. She. Come on, give them praise. Give them praise. I'm telling you, he's fixing to do some things, beloved. Amen. Hallelujah. He said he's going to give a garment of praise. Look at this now. A garment covers you. Uh-huh. So let me ask the question. What are you covered with today? Mm. What are you covered with emotionally today? What have you allowed yourself to be covered with? You may have walked in this morning clothed with disappointment. You may have walked in here this morning clothed with, with the disgusted mindset. You might have come in here clothed with hurt, heaviness in your heart, failure in your life, clothed with depression and oppression, clothed with the spirit of defeat. But the good news is God sent me here today to tell you he's going to take away that old garment. He's going to cover you and fill you with a new one. He's going to put a garment of praise on you. See, when God gives you a new garment, your appearance starts to change. You don't look the same no more. You don't look like the person you used to be. You don't look like the person you was when you walked in here. And if you let him cover you with a new garment, your outlook on 2022 is going to change too because you're carrying a new garment. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands one more time in this place. Let me speak this over you. Now look, if you don't want this, just keep your hands down. But I got enough faith going into this new year that I'm just going to believe what I'm saying. In 2022, I decree and declare that God's going to fill you with beauty instead of ashes. He's going to fill you with joy for the morning. He's going to cover you with a garment of praise. And if you allow him to, and you'll believe that today, you'll leave this place with a new outlook on life. I'm telling you, I decree and declare over your life today, joy, joy, joy. No more depression. No more oppression. No more hurting in your heart. From now on, every memory will be a good memory. I'm telling you today, beloved, he's going to expand your way of thinking. He's going to expand, expand. Expand, expand in the name of Jesus. And if you believe that today, give God a praise in this house. <laughs> Hallelujah. The fourth thing I said, he's going to pour out a double blessing. Isaiah 61, 7 says, instead of your shame, you will have a double portion. Instead of humiliation, they will shout for joy over their portion. 
Therefore, they will possess a double portion in their land. Everlasting joy will be theirs. Watch this now. Read this scripture, dissect it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Instead of your shame, you will have a double portion. How are you going to get the double portion? It says a comma right there. For joy, for they will shout with joy over their portion. If you can't give God praise for the portion you have, you'll never receive the double portion. Oh, I didn't know I had a portion. You got a portion this morning, beloved. Everybody in this room has a portion. And if you can give God praise over the portion he's already given you, he'll increase you. He'll expand you. He'll give you double. Oh. When the Holy Spirit comes upon a person, he is receiving the second blessing. You already got double right there. And this year, I believe God is waiting and wanting for you and I to receive every promise that he has given. And if we can do that, we'll experience a double portion of blessings for the struggles that he we have went through. Huh. Just go ahead and look at your neighbor. And say, I'm going to be blessed. Because I rejoice over my portion. Ah, uh, hallelujah. Yes, the Holy Spirit is going to bless you this year. Understand that none of this that has happened over the past couple of years has caught God by surprise. Yeah, if I could say it like this, it's been a setup. <laughs> it's been a setup from the Father. He's been watching and listening to his church, to the people that say they're Christians, and now they have separated uh, the tares from the wheat is what he's been doing, and the favor of the Lord is about to hit the people that have been faithful to the ones that stood upon his word. Let me tell you, beloved, divine expansion of supernatural favor over God's people will come to pass in the year of 2022. Mm-mm-mm. Come on up, Pastor Jennifer. Hallelujah. Don't go nowhere, First Lady. Hallelujah. You have to take back the promises of God. All the promises of God have already been given to you. You have to take them. You have to take them. You have to believe the kingdom will grow. You have to believe that he's going to bind up the brokenhearted. You have to believe for change in your life. You have to believe for the double portion, beloved. It's up to you to take the promises of God. And the only way it will happen is be yielded to the Holy Spirit. Yielded to the Holy Spirit. Today, God is going to do some things. I gave four things this morning that I believe God is going to do. Four things. And there's four categories that are in this room today. Oh, yeah. I know some of you could say, well, I, I could probably fit into all of them, and you might could. But I'm telling you, God has a special thing for you today. All right, hey, Pastor Harold here again, uh, coming to you live. I want to say thank you for watching that message. I pray and believe that it has changed your life for Jesus Christ. And so today, if you made a commitment to serve the Lord, maybe for the first time, or maybe you was rededicating your life to the Lord, we want to know about it right here at Abundant Life for Sight. You can hit us up on our Facebook page by Messenger and just simply type, let us know that you uh, made that decision today because we want to get in contact with you and let you know what your next step is as a child of God. We also want to encourage you to find a church home. We believe your church home is right here. God has led you to watch uh, our sermon today, our messages, and we believe that he has drawn you to this house. And so we would like to hear from you. We'd like to see you here at our services at one of uh, Sundays, 9 or 11 a.m. We also have Wednesday night service. 
at 7 p.m. with complete youth ministry, children's ministry, the whole nine yards. Hey, we want to see and hear from you. Also, I want to just simply touch base. A lot of people ask us how they can sow into this ministry. Well, there's several ways that you can do it. Number one, you can mail it to 962 Juliet Road, Forsyth, Georgia, 31029. You can also download our app. Our app is called Abundant Life Church Georgia. You can find that either in iTunes or on Google Play. It's a free app. Download it. You can go on there and click on the Forsyth campus. Give to Forsyth. You can give that way. You can also give through our online website. Now, that I'll have to get you a little bit more information on. But if you would like to send a prayer request, you can also send a prayer request uh, through email to ForsythInfo at AbundantLifeChurch.com. And the last thing, you can always contact us by phone and we can give you any information you need. Our phone number is uh, 470-369-7300. Hey, I pray and believe that God has touched you today and I want to hear from you. Hey, stay tuned. We got a lot of messages coming your way. God bless you and have a great day.